Given the points B and C below, construct, without using a protractor or set square, a point A such that angle ABC equals 60 degrees. Here is what we do. We put the compass point at B, set the compass to the distance C, and draw an arc that's centered at B. The next thing we do is we place the compass point at C, and with the same setting on the compass, we draw an arc through the point B that intersects this arc. This is the point A. If we connect A to B, then the angle ABC formed is 60 degrees. So I want to explain why this is true. We connect A down to C. BC, this length here, is the radius of this arc. But BA is also the radius of the same arc. So BC equals BA. CB is the radius of this arc here. But so is CA, because A is a point on this arc. So CB equals CA. So this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side, so the three sides are equal to each other. So what we have is an equilateral triangle. And in an equilateral triangle, the three angles are the same, and they sum to 180 degrees, so the three angles must be 60 degrees each. So in particular, angle ABC is 60 degrees. In the diagram, L1, L2, L3 and L4 are parallel lines that make intercepts of equal length on the transversal K. So this is the transversal, it's a line that cuts across a set of parallel lines. It's not parallel to these lines, of course. And it makes equal intercepts, so the distance from this point to this point is the same as the distance of this point to this point. And um, we're given that it's equal to CD as well. So those three distances are the same. FG is parallel to K and HG is parallel to ED. Prove that the triangles C, D, E and F, G, H are congruent. So we're given that F, G is parallel to this line here, this is line K. Um, H, G is parallel to D, E. Well, notice that we have a parallelogram formed here because FG is parallel to the line K um, and L1 is parallel to the line L2. So that means that this distance here, which is FG, is equal to this distance here. Actually, I could just put a red mark on that. But this distance here is equal to this distance here. So we now see that FG, these three distances are the same, so FG is equal to CD. So we have a side that's the same in both of these triangles. FG is equal to CD. If we want to write down a reason, we could just say opposite sides of parallelogram, where we are referring to this parallelogram here. FG equals this side. And since we're given that this distance here is equal to this distance, that's a given then we can conclude that FG must equal CD. So the parallelogram in question is this parallelogram here. Now let's look at some angles in these two triangles. Well, I'm using small letters to represent angles. Normally capital letters are used to represent angles, but the capital letters ha have been used here to represent points. Um, Angle A equals angle B. Why is that? Well, we're given that these two lines are parallel and L1 is cross, cutting across these two parallel li lines. So we have what are called corresponding angles formed. So A and B are corresponding angles. So that means they're equal. Angle A equals angle B. However, angle A and angle C are also corresponding angles. We have the line L1 and L3 
which are parallel and with this line cutting through them forming compare corresponding angles a and c and corresponding angles are equal so angle a equals angle c but these two are equal to the same thing so it means that angle b must equal angle c so now we've established that two e two angles we've established that this angle is the same in both triangles we're trying to prove that both triangles are congruent so we found this an equal angle in both of them if i extend this line de to this line to the line l1 and call this angle d we have another pair of corresponding angles if i call this angle in here e we see that d is equal to e since this line is parallel to this line so we've established that two angles are the same in both of these triangles by the way this angle here is f d is equal to f so this is another pair of corresponding angles we have this line here cutting across the parallel lines l1 and l3 forming corresponding angles d and f so since both angle e and f are equal to angle d it means that angles e and f are equal to each other so we've established that two angles are the same in both of these triangles b equals c and e equals f if two angles are the same it means that the third angle is automatically the same g and h are the remaining angles so g is equal to h so if we look at these two triangles we see that we have angles the same this angle here which is b is equal to this angle here which is c i'll just color them in just to make it clearer and angle g is equal to angle h i'll use a different color here this angle equals this angle here and we have a side that's the same this side here is the same as this side so we have an angle side angle situation that's abbreviated to ASA so the two angles on the side must appear like this for the two triangles to be congruent angle side angle angle side angle so if the triangles are congruent then the other sides are the same so this side here equals this side here and this side here will equal this side here and of course toward angles are the, st are the same the in circle of the triangle abc has center o and touches the sides at p q and r as shown prove that angle p q r equals a half of the sum of the angles c a b and c b a since O is the in center of this triangle, that means it's the center of the in circle. The line from O to P is is perpendicular to the tangent. We've got a tangent at P, and it's a fact that the line from the center to the point of contact of a tangent is perpendicular to the tangent. Similarly here, the line from O to Q is perpendicular to the tangent at Q so angle OQA OQA this angle here is equal to angle OPA OPA is this angle here They're both 90 degrees now we can show that the points P O Q and A lie on a circle in other words the points are concyclic by using this theorem which says that if the opposite angles of a quadrilateral is summed to 180 degrees then the quad quadrilateral is cyclic which means that we can draw a circle through the four corners of the quadrilateral we've got a quadrilateral formed here the quadrilateral p o q a well this angle and this angle are opposite angles of this quadrilateral and you can see the sum of them is 180 90 plus 90 is equal to 180 so if the opposite angle sum to 180 then we can draw a circle that passes through the four corners of the quadrilateral now by the way if this pair of opposite angles are 
sum to 180, then the other pair automatically sum to 180. So if you're wor worried about these, don't, because the four angles sum to 360. And if these two sum to 180, then the other two must sum to 180 to give a total of 360. So we only have to look at one pair of opposite angles and see if they sum to 180. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral, so we can draw a circle through the four corners. The next theorem we will use is the theorem about angles standing on the same arc of a circle. This angle and this angle stand on this arc. So they both stand on the same arc. That means that these two angles are equal to each other. Similarly, this angle here and this angle here stand on this arc up here. So these two angles are the same. If we look here at the arc OP, it's this arc here. This angle here that lies between this line and this line here stands on the arc PO and so does this angle. If I connect A to O These two angles with the dot stand on the arc OP. So we have angle OQP, this angle, equal to angle OAP, this one here, because they stand on this arc. The point O is equidistant from this side and this side of the triangle. Because the distance of O to P is the radius of the in-circle, and the distance of O to Q is the radius. So this distance equals this distance. And um, so the, the perpendicular distance of O to the sides of this triangle, this side AC and AB are the same. So that means O must, is on the bisector of this angle here. Which means that this angle equals this angle. So now we see that angle OQP, which is this angle here, is half of this angle. Well, this angle is called PAQ. PAQ. But angle PAQ is the same as angle CAB. Now we can repeat the entire argument for the quadrilateral ROQB. OR is perpendicular to this line here. Uh, OQ is perpendicular to this line here. We have a quadrilateral ORBQ whose opposite angles sum to 180. 90 plus 90 is 180. So the points ROQB are concyclic, which means we can draw a circle through the four corners of this quadrilateral. And uh, if we just follow everything we did, we can end up showing that this angle in here, which I'll call x, is equal to the two angles that make up this angle down here. So you can see the same pattern for this quadrilateral as for this one over here. But this angle, which I've marked x, is angle O, Q, R. It's this angle here. So this angle X is half of this angle. It's two of them make up this angle. But this angle here is angle C, B, A. So angle X, which is angle O, Q, R, is half of angle C, B, A. Notice that if we add half CAB onto a half CBA, we get the right-hand side of what we're trying to prove after we factor out this half. So the right-hand side is the sum of this angle with this angle. But that's the same thing as summing angle OPQ, or sorry, OQP, which is this angle here, with angle OQR.
But what is the sum of these two angles? So we're summing these two angles in here now. Well, let's just angle PQR. So angle PQR is the sum of these two angles. If we add this angle onto this angle, factorize out to half, we get angle CAB plus angle CBA, which is what we have to prove. Here's another way to do this. As before, we start by noting that OPC equals ORC. Actually, we're looking at the line joining the center to the tangent. So OPC equals ORC. Tangent is perpendicular to the line joining the center of the circle to the point of contact. This angle here should be PCR. PCR is this angle up here. PCR plus POR equal 180 degrees. Why is that? Well, we have this quadrilateral here, and all four angles add up to 360. The opposite angles here add up to, nine, well, 1990 is 180, so these two must add up to 180 as well, because the four angles add up to 360. So we have PCR, this angle, plus POR equals 180, or PCR equals 180 minus POR. But PCR is part of the big triangle, and the three angles in a triangle sum to 180. So PCR plus CAB plus CBA add up to 180. So we can say that PCR is 180 minus the sum of these two angles. So now we can bring these two angles into the problem, which is what we need to do, because it's part of the proof, CAB and CBA. These two angles down here, um, when taken from 180, leaves us with this angle up here, PCR. So, these two things are e both equal to angle PCR, so they must be equal to each other. 180 minus angle POR and 180 minus angle COB CAB plus angle CBA are both equal to the same thing. They're both equal to angle C PCR, so they must be equal to each other. So if we put this here equal to this here, the 180s cancel out, we can forget the minus signs and we end up showing that angle POR equals angle CAB plus angle CBA. So we get this line here. Now, POR is this angle here. Now we have a circle theorem coming into play. This angle here stands on the arc PR in this circle. It's the angle at the center of this circle. And we know that the angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circle, which is this angle here, and standing on the same arc. So both of these angles stand on the same arc. So we know that this angle is twice this angle. So angle POR, this angle here, is twice angle PQR. Or we could turn that around to say that angle PQR is half, angle PQR is half angle POR. We need angle PQR. Um, but half of angle POR is just half of this sum here, half of angle CAB plus angle CBA. So that's the end of this proof.